Ladies and gentlemen, moving on. Our next speaker for today is going to be addressing the topic emerging role of mobile and consumer experiences and identity resolution. Kelly Kokonas, EVP, Global Data, Starcom Publicis Group. As Starcom's global lead on data technology and analytics, Kelly works with the agency's client teams to ensure Starcom delivers advanced data-driven strategy at scale. She is responsible for helping Starcom's global clients determining, determine their overreaching data vision while also collaborating with client teams to create the roadmaps and project plans that will bring that vision to life. Kelly, hi. You're Hello. Here. Hello. Time zone and reporting. Yeah, re reporting live from Chicago. So where we also enjoy pizza, uh, including. <laughs> Uh, so thanks to the previous discussion, too. That was really great. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, good to see everyone uh, and looking forward to talking here. I'll share my screen uh, as the process goes. And um, and here we go. Um, thank you for that nice introduction. Uh, the work of my team um, is really how we use data upstream and um, in tactical um, applications. So how we use data in strategy work, um, identifying audiences for growth and revealing insights about those audiences and finding inspiration for game-changing experiences, including mobile mobile first experiences in commerce as well as in media. And also how we use data in downstream ways, the tactics of how those audiences are handled in optimization and activation and measurement. And increasingly in this new wave of mobile growth um, and all the innovations in the mobile marketing space, um, the data that's created um, through these mobile experiences is increasingly important. So I'll talk a bit today about um, the role of mobile in data-driven consumer experiences, highlighting some perspective and research from some agency work we've done and some data with partnerships. And so I'll talk a bit about another work stream that's emerging, which is um, for more and more of our clients, very important. And that's around identity resolution and the role of mobile ad IDs or maids as data that's critical to that identity resolution. So as a as a in point of introduction, and we just previously heard how important customers are at the heart of our products. Likewise, it's a good reminder that when we, when we think about data in all of its forms, from ID level to aggregated insights, that data is simply people in disguise. And um, this keeps me motivated to um, continue the work with data because it really is just about people and how we're interacting. And it's people that uh, are talking on social channels. It's their, it, and subsequently then, it's their devices that are talking to us, their purchases are talking, their media habits are talking, their favorite apps are talking, and even their cars are talking. And through this, so much data is being created. And so we as marketers and agency partners, we are looking at all of these data signals that are given to us. And we have this opportunity now, um, which is uh, more at the forefront more than ever, to illuminate this incredibly dynamic consumer journey through the data lens. And so uh, for many of uh, my clients and the work we're doing together, it's about having a data strategy to capture the data, capture, enrich, manage, have respect for adherence to cons consent and privacy. Um, but it's, um, it's, about creating and maintaining a first party data strategy, whether it's through CRM or loyalty programs, but also through media and mobile first media experiences. So this is the great opportunity that we face today. The other lens that we uh, can take as marketers um, in this mobile first world is that this landscape is truly a platform world and successful marketers may also want to consider to act like a platform themselves. Um, we know from our familiar platforms that are part of our daily lives, um, listed here below on the bottom of the chart, some examples. These platforms are data rich. They know, they know us as customers better than anyone. These platforms are, they benefit from network effects. Um, they're their own personalized ecosystems and they are direct to consumer. And so in this rapidly evolving platform world, companies can't afford to operate independently. Orgs and their partners, um, like marketers and agencies, need to work alongside each other to deliver this real transformation 
to stay competitive with these other uh, other platforms um, and uh, and lead for category growth. The um, consumer category and competitor shifts demand a new approach uh, as brands are competing for attention. Retailer frenemies are disrupting different modes of business. Uh, there's new D2C models that are challenging how consumers buy the products as featured in the previous discussion. And we have shared distribution partners um, who are starting to know more and more about our own customers. So we're in this new era of working together. It's more holistic. It's more integrated. And um, we have to work together in new and different ways to navigate this platform world. And winning in this platform world gives us um, gives rise to in, indeed the importance of data in all of its forms. Uh, here in India, um, and actually across the globe, I'll say we have about 14 different data intelligence centers within the Publicis group, um, and one of them um, located here in India. And in these data intelligence hubs, we have the practice of applying qualitative and quantitative analysis um, to respond to these real world marketing challenges as in the platform world. And so I've got a few uh, charts here that are illuminating some insights from this tracker work. It's um, inclusive of consumer sentiment, attitudes and search trends, um, social insight behaviors, media consumption behaviors from a variety of different sources, um, uh, social listening net base, um, TV viewing data from Bark, um, website behavior from Comscore or similar web, and then all uh, various publicly available data sets um, especially in recent months, tracking COVID infections and vaccinations, um, mobility data through Google and economic um, government sources. So I wanted to just share and reveal a few uh, highlight data points here. Some may be a surprise, some may be very familiar, um, but mobile behaviors are certainly dominant in consumer experiences and the pandemic has shaped new behaviors, no surprise. But I think the, the stat of 1 billion smartphone users by 2025 in India is really an incredible data point to watch. Um, monthly usage and new internet users are also on the rise. And uh, the search, whether it's uh, you know vernacular search or voice search are certainly also at great rates of increase. With all of this data, we're also looking at um, keeping track of shoppers and coming into this festive season, um, where shoppers are clamoring for different sales for Diwali. Oops, sorry. Um, the sentiment, we're tracking sentiment, of course, and there's a lot of sentiment around celebration and shopping um, and sales are top keywords. And of course, many of our retail clients are capitalizing on these festival offers in order to drive their own sales. And Important to us gathered here talking about the mobile growth, I think it's interesting to notice that um, some of the top conversation themes during this current season are inclusive of conversations around uh, smartphones as one of the top conversations. Um, and those conversations in the aquamarine blue cluster there are around season, the deals and discounts. So certainly part of our everyday discussions. Looking at this data here from our tracker, these are website visits. Um, and what we notice here is that digital adoption is being driven by some old school industries. Um, we noticed we in the previous discussion, there was discussions about the rise in visits to food and drink uh, sites, which is also inclusive here. But the thing I think is interesting is in that lower right corner there around education visits. and. The lockdowns have definitely opened up av avenues for experimenting with digital forms of education, um, showing a 181% lift versus the base. Um, and so certainly um, we are using not only our mobile devices, but other technology um, that is and adopting those different digital, uh, whether it's the products themselves or whether the behaviors of visiting different websites, those are certainly um, something to keep an eye on. Certain websites, um, this is looking at here, you've got um, visits to different websites. This is year over year. So 2020 on the bottom, 2021 on the top. And what we notice here is that certain sites like Google and Facebook continue to benefit from people seeking information and socializing on the internet. Uh, and um, this, they just continue to have that strong presence in our everyday lives. And of course, the um, access to Google and Facebook oftentimes um, over indexes mobile versus desktop. Um, but we have to beware because of course, even we as consumers and also as marketers, 
we need to um, keep keep uh, attention to the potential over-reliance on platforms in our daily lives, um, which was a good example earlier this month when Facebook, with the Facebook outage, and certainly brought that to life. Um, and many of us were um, worried about how we could connect in our in our normal daily lives uh, during this outage. But um, certainly it will happen again, and we'll need to um, take note of, um, you know, how we, how we can maintain consumer connectivity, um, not only through these um, major platforms, but also make sure we have our own um, connections to them through our, through potentially through our own platforms. So shifting from um, these highlights from our tracker, I wanted to um, uh, share, and this is really fresh and hot off the press. There's a a new report um, that I'm excited to share. Um, actually, it's just dropped today and there'll be press on Monday globally. Um, it's our Global Media Intelligence Report 2021 that we publish year over year with eMarketer and GWI, primarily GWI data. And the entire collection is an impressive and comprehensive compilation of data on traditional and digital media usage across 43 countries, including India. Um, and it's a really useful report for anyone looking at that market level data and looking for global trends. Um, it's one of my personal projects and it's a fun time of year when this comes out. Um, featured here, I've got two charts to share. And of course I encourage you to check out the uh, full report when it drops on Monday um, by visiting eMarketer. Uh, but the penetration of desktops, laptops and tablets is actually falling across the globe. Um, but in certain markets, PC ownership is on the slight rise. And so you'll notice on that second line of data here in India um, that PC ownership is on the rise. And I wonder, I can't help but think that potentially the rise of PC and tablet ownership is driven at least in part by some of those, dyna those education dynamics that we mentioned earlier. Uh, another another uh, chart to show from the um, Global Media Intelligence Report in many countries, digital video is overtaking broadcast TV, and a good portion of that can be on people's mobile devices. And so India is among the 50% of countries surveyed where 75% of internet users had watched streaming video on demand in the past month. So another uh, important trend to keep an eye on as we think about the branded experiences that we create for people on their mobile devices, um, either as part of their uh, streaming video experiences or adjacent to. And a bit of a pivot, I want to just touch on the second piece of uh, the second part of the theme um, in my this discussion today is that in addition to all this data for consumer insights, which of course typically is more at the aggregate level, data at the aggregate level, uh, my teams and the work with clients today are focused on <clears throat> data for personalization. And we do this through partnerships and identity resolution. Uh, I think we all, many of us here gathered, uh, realize the ambition for those journey-centric personalizations um, and all the stages leading up to that in understanding people through the data, the data profiles. Um, and within Publicis Group and Publicis Media, <clears throat> all of our data partners, excuse me, are prioritized against our group data strategy. So we are, we're looking uh, to create accurate and scaled identity data. We uh, <clears throat> and then create a deep understanding and, uh, and measurement framework by enrichment and have quick and high fidelity connectivity with those consumers that we come to know. Um, and so I wanted to share this as an offer as we think about um, the role of uh, mobile in data collection. We know that each market has its own place in the data maturity continuum. And of course, um, within Publicis Group and our Epsilon uh, colleagues, of course, in markets like the US, France, and UK, where we have very advanced core IDs um, to understand people with a high fidelity of data. Um, I'm working with clients across um, you know, market lists that can be upwards of 90, 90 different markets. And so what we need to understand is what data is available to um, create identity level data on, about our consumers. Um, and so we look at device, uh, digital device penetration. We of course keep tabs on privacy regulation um, and then marketing spend. And we're looking to work with partners um, that lead in the local markets against uh, whatever the local market conditions may be. So we really do um, <clears throat> recognize the role of maids um, and mobile ad IDs as really important consumer data um, signals in the consumer journey and we're working with key partners like ZioTap 
for example, here in India, um, to help make those connections um, and to build that um, ID level understanding of our consumers um, in partnership with our clients. So I want to say thank you for your attention. I look forward to your questions here or by email and follow up. And uh, uh, good luck with the rest of the of the uh, of the conference today. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Thank you. Yes. Hi. That was really enriching. Extremely lovely, and I'm sure the audience has enjoyed it thoroughly. Thank you so much for making the time. I know you're overseas, and it must have been difficult to do this. But you've done it, and we are so, so, so grateful for you being here. Great. Thank you so much. Take care.